everybody and welcome to Baphomet's Lounge. And with the recent death of Steve Holland, um, the last member of the original lineup of Molly Hatchet has passed. So, in honor of the original lineup, I think it's time I, I do a little thing on their discography. Now, just so you realize, there was a sec there is a second lineup that's currently touring on Molly Hatchet. It's not comprised of any of the original members. Um, I'll get to it in a second. Um, <clears throat> let me get in there. I don't have any of those albums from that incarnation in my collection. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. I'm not going to say don't go see them. I'm not going to say don't buy the stuff. Okay, there are hardcores that have issues with that, and I'll address that in a bit. Um, I just, what I've heard hasn't really impressed me. Now, I may go down the line and pick one up or two up and complete, and maybe my mind will change. And uh, I have to give a shout-out to my buddy Philippe Warda because um, <clears throat> Philippe was one. I, I ended black listening to Black Sabbath at uh, Seventh Star, and uh, Philippe said, no, you got to check out the stuff with... Um, Oh, I can't think of his name. The, the third, fourth singer, technically. Um, and, you know, the Tire album and, and, and the Headless Cross and all that stuff. And I delved into it, and he was kept, uh, Martin, Tony Martin. Uh, I, I dove into it, and I was like, wow, this is pretty good, and I really enjoyed it. So, I'm not going to cut myself off, cut my nose to spite my face, um, or anything like that. Um, I will explain in a second, uh, you know, later on. Uh, let me get into the discography. So starting from the top, Molly Hatchet, Molly Hatchet. Very first album. I know it might sound like I am, I'm shilling for them, but I'm not. But Rock Candy Records, who I really enjoy buying CDs from them, they just released this remastered, and it sounds fantastic, and it comes with live bonus cuts. It's absolutely, absolutely stellar, but the very first Molly Hatchet album is fantastic. Opening up with Bounty Hunter, then Gator Country, Big Apple, The Creeper, The Price You play, Pay, The Infamous Dreams I'll Never See. Dun, 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 dun. The coolest groove on the planet, bar none, except for... I just found out, and... They took that groove from Buddy Miles, and I just bought that CD from 1970-71, uh, Them Changes. He is the first to redo that, and he does a funkier, it's a little bit funkier, not as heavy and driving as the Molly Hatchet version, but he's got horns, it's kind of like dunk, 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 ba da Ba, da, da, like with horns so um, I always thought their version was stellar but now I realize that they got it from Buddy Miles and I do want to give a shout out even though I do love their version shout out to Buddy Miles for, for rocking it out and then uh, I'll be running cheating woman trust your old friend and a great album, great album. Second album, 79's Flirtin' With Disaster. Comes right out, out of the gun. Whiskey Man, it's all over now. One Man's Pleasure, Jukin City. Boogie No More, Flirtin' With Disaster. The title track, of course. Good Rockin', Gunsmoke, uh, Long Time, and Let the Good Times Roll. Now, I don't think this is a, I don't think it's as strong as the album as the first one. I, I wasn't a huge, huge fan. Or no, I enjoy it, but I still think the first album st is stellar. And again, uh, no, the version I got is a, a legacy recording version from Sony Music, and it comes with four bonus tracks uh, remastered, and that's part of my collection. There were issues. Danny Joe Brown splits with the band. So... They find a new singer in Jimmy Farrar, and in 1980, they release Beating the Odds. And this is a stellar album. Again, this is a uh, remaster from um, Rock Candy, and uh, I, I think it's stellar. This is just balls out, and I actually prefer Jimmy Farrar. And, you know, Jimmy Farrar was not that cute, I'll tell you that much. He was the size of a house and had a face that could stop a Mack truck, and he was open about it. But, man, that dude had a voice, and it was just balls out. And uh, they toured incessantly on that album. And at that time, in 81, two albums came out. Take No Prisoners, 
uh, and this version that I have, uh, a version of, of Take No Prisoners, is a Beat Goes On Records. And they're another record label that I really enjoy out of Britain, uh, just like Rock Candy out of Britain. They do uh, release a lot of great stuff. Um, uh, and remasters two discs on one set. Um, so I have a lot of Beat Goes On as well in my collection. I don't think they do the sonic quality as well as Rock Candy does. But Take No Prisoners, great. Comes out. Bloody reunion, balls to the wall, respect me in the morning, long tall Sally, um, all mine, lady luck, power play, don't mess around, uh, don't leave me lonely, and dead giveaway. And um, actually, this version, or Beating the Odds, I had autographed by uh, Dave, Hul uh, Dave Lubeck, the original uh, guitar player, Dave Lubeck. And uh, that's when I saw him uh, when he was with the Southern Rock All-Stars in June of 98. I went to the surf club at Bemis Point, New York with Feedback Bernie, and I met him. And Jackson Spires, the late great Jackson Spires from Blackfoot was in that band. I think J. Jenny Johnson was in that one. And also at the same time, uh, Greg T. Walker. So I actually got autographs on a lot of my old CDs, which I've kept, replaced with remasters. But yeah, this this album is is stellar. And also in '81 comes out the Danny jo uh, Danny Joe Brown and the Danny Joe Brown Band, which was his solo thing. Um, I got the Rock Candy remaster of that, and it's okay. It's an okay album. Nothing really sticks out at me. Um, the only thing that really comes through is Edge of Sundown. And in this one is when Danny Joe connects with his old bandmate from before he made a big guy by the name of Bobby Ingram. And Bobby Ingram will feature prominently later on in the story. So they kind of get together a bunch of good old boys to put a band. I, I, I think they're like a bar band. Um Maybe time will make me enjoy this better, but I am not as enthralled with this as I was with the Jimmy Farrar stuff. And I think the Jimmy Farrar stuff is, is unbelievably strong. Jimmy Farrar decided he didn't want to tour anymore. He was missing his family. He was missing his kids growing up. And Danny Joe Brown's project wasn't doing well either. They, he probably was relegated to small clubs versus the festivals that they were doing at. So... Hatcher comes back with a new album in 83 called No Guts, No Glory. And the, the lineup has, has, has um, uh, reunited, except for, I think, Banner Thomas has left. Um, I think B.B. Borden from Mother's Finest has joined. Um, and they come back with another album. Fall of the Peacemakers from Danny Joe Brown Bands comes back into this uh, album. Um, it's okay. It's... It's, oh yeah, this one, oh yes, my version is autographed by Dave Ludek. Um, this one hasn't been remastered yet. Um, it's okay. Um, it's not, a, it, it sounds, it, it, it does sound like old Molly Hatchet, still Southern, but it doesn't really, um, it, it, there's something missing. Maybe some magic had gone. Uh, 84, they released The Deed Is Done. And, uh, yep, this one I have autographed by Dave Lubeck as well. Uh, I don't think there's a remaster for this yet. This one, it, it, they tried to go contemporary for the times, and they kind of pushed back the southerness of it and kind of tried to go with the 80s rockness at the time. Satisfied Man, Backstabber, were the two stone in your heart. Poppier stuff, um... But not, you know, like kind of what ZZ Top had done with the Eliminator, where they got a little bit more modern sounding for that time. Molly Hatchet tried, you know, not as bad as ZZ Top had done, but they tried to sound a little bit more modern, and, and that's what transpired. Uh, after that, they released a live album, Double Trouble Live, in 85. Um, this album, the CD is missing... Uh, Riff West uh, was on bass. I think Banner Thomas had left. Um, has goes through all the motions, and actually the the, the stuff from uh, the previous album that they play on here, like Satisfied Man and Stone Your Heart and Bloody Reunion, that he actually Danny Joe Brown does sing the um, Jimmy Farrar stuff, and he does an excellent job. This is great, except for the CD is cut some tracks, and. 
I would rather have heard those tracks on there, you know, they combine it to one CD, instead of the, I believe it's a, yeah, the version of Freebird on there, which is like, meh, not that not that intriguing for me, but a, a solid live album. I definitely, definitely enjoyed this one. And then the final album that they put out is Lightning Strikes Twice in 89. This is when Bobby Ingram joins the band. The band's a shell of itself. Um, Dave Ludek, he did not autograph, or did he? I told him about this one. I remember when I met him, and he's like, that album's terrible. I know he autographed this. I know he autographed this somewhere. I know he did. But I remember him saying, oh, that album's terrible. And, um, you know, there's it's Riff West. John Gavin, who joined them in the 80s to play keyboards. Dwayne Rowland, uh, Danny Joe Brown, Bobby Ingram, and Bruce Crump. So it's uh, Bruce Crump, who, who's, uh, you know, so it's like half and half band. And <clears throat> that was the last studio lineup of... Molly Hatchet. I actually like the album. It's got some cornball. It's actually got some. It's back to a southern, but a lot of keyboards and you know, take Miss Lucy home. There goes the neighborhood. Uh, no room on the crew. Find somebody new. The big payback. I can't be watching you. Goodbye to love. A really, really cool version of Hide Your Heart by Kiss. I think this was released before Kiss released their studio version. Um, in Hot in the Shade. What's the story, old glory, and in Heart of My Soul. I think the songwriting great i think the production is poor they try to pull it back to a southern bent um but they um the production was just weak on that um i saw molly hatchet twice <clears throat> i don't have it lo uh, logged the first one brother john and i definitely saw them and if somebody knows the date of that show where it was and if the set list would be great we saw them at a place called the pleasure dome in niagara falls <clears throat> new york and it was um i know bobby ingram was with it danny joe brown and um uh banner thomas was back on base and uh then the next time i saw them was with the secondary molly hatchet band which was uh in 98 and they played at uh, what we had, Lafayette Square. And uh, that was, uh, Daniel Brown wasn't with them. The late Phil McCormick was the lead singer. Um, a decent enough singer and, and, and did justice to the stuff. Um, but, you know, again, I liked what... Um, Jimmy Farrar did. He didn't try to sound like Danny Joe Brown. He just brought his own set of rasp to it, and I enjoyed it immensely. Um, he, in 2000, Bobby Ingram became the sole owner of the trademark, and he acquired it from their manager, Pat Armstrong. And from that point on, Molly Hatchet became Molly Hatchet a name hole only. Um, I know that um, Dave Lubeck played with them, until his passing. Um, and so he was maybe the only original member, but he was sort of relegated off to the side. And John Gavin is still with them, who was a keyboard player through the 80s with them. Um, again, I haven't been... I, what I heard, sn snippets of it, didn't really impress me. Um, I'm not going to... It just So I never decided to go down that road. But it's Molly Hatchet. It legally has a right to be Molly Hatchet. Um, money was passed. Um, and it is what it is. Um, again, all of the members of the original Molly Hatchet, including Jimmy Farrar, who was the second lead singer, and uh, 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 Riff West, who was the bass player in the 80s, he passed away. Um, uh, and actually... Um, who else just... Uh, Phil McCormick, who replaced Danny Joe Brown in the secondary version of Molly Hedgen, he passed away recently. So there seems to be, a, I don't know what it is, a, a, a specter over it, but that is the leftover Molly Hatchet. Now, in... 2000 or in the, uh yeah 2005 the original X members formed a band called Gator Country. Now um he had still been uh Daniel Brown had passed I think by 2005 so they'd gotten Jimmy Farrar, Dwayne Rowland, Bruce Crump, Crump and Steve Holland uh and, and bassist Riff West had joined. Um Paul Chapman who had just recently I believe he's passed away, who played with um, UFO. Yeah, he just passed away this year. Uh, wow. Man, there's a lot of death. Man, Molly, Hatchet Molly is 
making her uh, rounds there, killing everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Farrar's passed away in 2018. Crump passed away in 2015. R Dwayne Rowland passed away in 2006. Right when the band, a year into the band starting. Uh, and then Steve Holland passed away. And so they released a live album just called Gator Country Live. And uh, I think it's live in the studio. And it's a re record, uh, you know, that lineup playing. Uh, basically traditional uh, traditional Molly Hatchet stuff. And it's it's all right. It's nice to hear Jimmy Farrar sing some of the songs, and um, it's good. But, you know, Molly, Molly, I love Molly Hatchet. And they they, they were, the original Molly Hatchet was stellar. Um, I'm reserving judgment on the, on the new Molly Hatchet. I know there's some stuff where uh, when they had a benefit for Danny Joe Brown as he was dying, and, you know, he had uh, kidney failure, I think, from... Um, uh, um, diabetes, chronic diabetes. Of course, he didn't take care of himself drinking and drugging and whatever. But um, all of the original guys came together to play at this benefit, but Molly Hatchett refused to play for the lead singer for whatever reason. There was some official reason. I know that was some bad blood. I know that that um, people had just... So there, there is stuff that... that um, it is what it is. But I really... I think that the original Molly Hatchett essential are the first four the first four are essentials um then you can go check out for the purists the the remainder of the stuff um i, I like i say i do like the last album uh, of the official lineup Light, lightning strikes twice 89 but i haven't delved into the the new molly hatchet for just i haven't um and i may someday do that and go wow look what i'm missing um if you want to go for it you have my blessing um, but I made a conscious decision, and there are people out there who don't appreciate what had happened with the with with the new lineup and 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 for our, uh, various things. And um, there's Facebook boards out there that are strictly the original Molly Hatchet. And there's Facebook boards out there for you know just Gator Country, dedicated to the original Molly Hatchet. And those people are entitled to their position, and I respect their desire to maintain a sense of purity, so to speak. And I say cool, but. There you have it, a little Molly Hatchet, and uh, um, I love Southern Rock, so they're one of the Southern Rock bands, you know, founders of it. So I thought I'd share it with you. Enjoy. Till the next time, peace, everybody.